So, welcome for the next lecture uh, organic farming concepts and principles uh, as we uh, discuss. So, we will we'll discuss so different uh, organic farming and finally, the principles on uh, organic farming. So, uh, what is uh, organic farming systems? You can see this is a ecological agriculture that means, this encompasses the entire complex of physical, economic, social and cultural conditions which affect the growth and development of organic system. It matches the crop, soil and climate of a region for gaining economy and efficient efficiency of inputs. So, uh, next says it reduces the pressure on land, water and biodiversity without adverse effect on agricultural production and nutritive value of food and maximizing ecological production efficiency. Ecological balance is attained by use of organic inputs like compost, vermicompost, botanical, microbial pesticides and beneficial organisms. That means, ecological agriculture is a nature, we, uh, we work in harmony with nature. So, that we are discussing earlier also. So, in a close uh, nature, nature, so as a uh, no waste concept. So, this is a complex of physical atmos uh, atmosphere, economic social cultural condition in an integrated manner that is say the ecological agriculture and our the purpose is to maintain the productions, to have the uh, productions as of the conventional farming and with a better quality and without affecting or deteriorating the environmental quality. So, biodynamic the different type of organic farming, biodynamic is one type of organic farming. So, this is a method of farming that emphasizes the holistic development and interrelationship of the soil, plants, animals as a self-sustaining systems. It is based on systematic and synergistic harnessing energies from cosmos, mother earth, plants and cows. So, in this biodynamic farming as one of the organic farming concepts where the cow horn and inside the cow horn, so different the cow dung, urines and manures, plant based manure also they are kept inside and incubated in soils for several months and this can be used, this can, this can has a tremendous effect on crops specially supplying the nutrients and supplying the increasing the hormones, growth hormones and also protect the crop from pest and diseases. This is what we will we'll be dealing in the classes, the detail in biodynamic farming. The next called Panchagavya farming. Here, it is a special bio enhancer prepared from 5 products obtained from cow. These are the dung, urine, milk, cod and ghee. So, these are the 5 products from the cow, very very useful as you, the, for the human being uh, the milk, cod, ghee, the urine and the dung because the dung is highly energetic and urine is a control of many pests and diseases. So, they are mixed together suitably mixed and incubated and used and used for the crop production in organic farming. farming. The preparation is rich in nutrients, oxygens, gibberlins and microbial fauna and act as tonic to enrich the soil, induce plant vigor with quality production. So, this is the panchakapya farming where the 5 component, 5 product from the cows. So, the dung, urine, milk, cod, ghee, they are mixed in a suitable proportions, incubated and then this can be sprayed on the crop on the over the crop canopy and can be used in the soil also as a fertilizers and as a pest as a control against pest and diseases and it has a tremendous effect on enhancing the soil fertility and also providing the growth hormones enzymes for the crops for proper growth and development and to have a better quality of the produce. Similarly, recyclis. So, in this system uh, rhizosphere soils uh, beneath a banyan tree is spread over the area and the amrit pani specially 
bio inoculants prepared from cow dung, cow ghee and honey is utilized for the seed and seedling treatment enrichment of soil by overhead sprinkling and through irrigation water. So, this is, so this is also uh, from the other uh, soils that is from the root rhizosphere, the rhizosphere area of the banyan tree. So, this has a uh, tremendous effects uh, on crop uh, vigor and developing a better growth and development of the crop. So, that is a uh, spread over the crop field and also the amritpan that is special uh, bio inoculants prepared from the cow dung, cow ghee and the honey it utilized for the silk treatment or silling treatment. So, it can the purpose is to minimize the, uh, the uh, disease and pest infestations at the same time that is as a uh, energetic or uh, that can as a boosting for the uh, crop growth and development. Natural farming this coming in big way. So, that is it consists of uh, say bizamrut that is a cow dung, urine, lime, virgin soil that means uh, non cultivated soil, uh, soil from the land is not called uh, barren land, the so, virgin soil for seed and set are the seedling treatment followed by regular use of zibam root that is a composition of cow dung, urine, jaggery, pulse floor and virgin soil through that can be applied regularly in irrigation water then coupled with mulching and proper soil aeration. So, uh, this uh, also uh, the natural farming uh, uh, government of India probably some uh, st sorry uh, st uh, um, government of Andhra Pradesh probably it is trying to establish a university of natural farming as uh, came in news. So, here they uh, you can use the uh, like a traditional way of farming and by uh, maintaining the production level same. So, the in situ the, the residues are left in the field and this the organic sources are applied in the field. So, using the cow as an integral part of the farming systems. Homa organic farming. So, uh, this you say as a Agnihotra farming or the uh, Homa organic farming as you know the home homo that is uh, used uh, in every home in, in, in occasions the puja celebrations we do home. So, uh, this has a tremendous effect on crops because uh, this is also uh, this you can say the concept of Indian uh, Indian origins how uh, the Homa doing a Homa in a crop field uh, the the practice to be followed like a uh, copper on the pyramid uh, copper, copper plate uh, in this it is the science of healing the atmosphere through pyramid fires to eliminate pollution and contamination and it should be practiced exactly at sunrise and sun, sunset time only. This farming neutralizes the negative energies and positive energies in the atmosphere. It is powerful biofood for the plants that are rich in macro micronutrients and rich in microbial population. That means, doing HOMA, so we, uh, uh, what you can do in a copper uh, pyramid type of pots as, as you have seen in the figure. Here you put uh, dried cow dung cake and the raw rice small amount of raw rice and ghee. Putting this you make put the fire make the fire and chanting the slogan exactly at the time of sun, sunrise and the sunset. So, that makes a vibrations in the atmosphere. So, that gives a, through this uh, the physical phenomenon in the atmosphere. So, that helps in uh, increasing the solar radiation receptive capacity of the plants and keeping the air free from many pests and diseases. And say that one homa can cover the area of around 140 acres of land and the effect shoots up the, the vertical direction up to 12 kilometers in the atmosphere and it gives the nutrition to all life the plants, animals and human beings those in earth. So, doing a homa because uh, it, it has a tremendous effects and some of the research is uh, has been done in India and abroad to in German. So, they have seen the effect that doing homa farming it increases the solar radiation absorbance capacity of the farmers sorry of the crops and also that eliminates 
that reduce the insect pest and disease infestation that, that means, there is a less use of any pesticides for controlling pest, uh, pest and disease. And moreover due to increasing interception of solar radiations by the crop plants due to home farming as it purify the atmosphere and increases the absorption of the solar radiation by the crops it enhances the crop yield. So, this is also Uma farming concept is one of the uh, organic farming where we do not use any chemical uh, pesticides or the uh, to control the pest and diseases and doing so Uma farming it, it, it can increase the productions and also it can improve the quality of the produce. And uh, we will go for the principles of uh, organic farming. So, there are three uh, basic principles of organic farming say cyclical principles, precautionary principle and nearness principle. So, cyclical principle number one we discuss is a close recycling or the crop cycle. So, we have to grow the one crop after another from the different groups the same crop should not be repeated season after season. So, uh, if so by changing the crops one crop after another in different seasons we can minimize the pest and disease population in the field at the same time we can maintain the soil fertility and we can improve the soil fertility long term basis. So, the, the cyclical principles as you said the biodiversity. So, changing crops same group of crops should not be rotated in the same field different crops should be taken to uh, maintain the soil fertility. The second principle is precautionary principles that means, the better safe than sorry that means, prevention is better than cure. So, we should not use anything any materials that is not allowed in organic farming. So, this precaution better to have a very safe better to avoid the use of any chemical uh, insecticides and pesticides that is the precautionary principles. And third one is the nearness principles that means, is the transparency, trust building. So, that is also very very important in organic farming. So, when you say product is organic it should be really organic. We should be honest in our approach the farmers they are producing organic that should be clearly organic there is no ambiguity on this. So, they say health, knowledge, market culture, transparency should be developed. So, these three are, three are the main principles as you discuss the cyclical that means, collaboration with nature should be promoted through the establishment and build up of a cyclical principle that ensure versatility, diversity and harmony, the recycling and use of renewable resources that come the cyclical principles precautionary known and well functioning technologies are better than risky technology. It is better to prevent damage than to depend on our ability to cure the damage. That means, we should not use the materials which are not allowed in organic farming. So, not to take the risk we must we should use only those materials which are allowed only organic fertilizers, only organic pesticides those, those things are allowed those things can be used in organic farming. Nearness, transparency and cooperation in food productions can be improved by nearness. That means, for example, using experience based knowledge and local interest concerning the development of cultural and social value. So, nearness principles that transparency is a close association producers and the consumer this should be a close association. There should be the trust building among the producers and the consumers. So, there should be very transparent if it is organic that is a organic, if it is not organic that is a non organic. So, this type of the trust building among the producers and the consumers should be developed and they should be in very close loop for the successful of this organic farming. And if you see the, the other principles that say IFOM International Federation of Organic Agricultural Movement. So, this started uh, in 1972 probably in that head office in, in uh, German uh, Germany. 
So this is, they, are, they are principles of organic agriculture. So, say principle one, health, to sustain and enhance the health of soil, plant, animal, humans, and planet as one and indivisible. So the health means not only soil health we are seeing. So we'll maintain the health of soil, and the soil is delivering the plants, is giving supplying nutrient plants, the plant health, and the animal health. And finally, the human health that is from farm to plate, as you say, the human being consumes. So, everything the system chain farm to plate should be well defined organic systems that uh, systems and that causes that that increase the healthy diet, healthy soil, healthy plants, and healthy animal. Now, you say the even if the animals organic fish and organic bee productions, so you see, even if the organic poultry. So, if you complete organic systems, the poultry feed materials they are produced as organic origins. So, the, the meat can be marketed as a organic poultry. Similarly, the organic beef, the cattle feeding materials of the cattle that is also made up organic and also the management of cattle, how do you rear the cattle, the way you cattle, the, as you said there is no harm to cattle. So, that it, 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 it has a the different physiological activity among the cattle or the cow. So, the beef is also marketed as a organic beef as you see in developed country they have the organic beef and that is a very premium high premium price as compared to the, the conventional conventional beef. So, this is the principle one that is the health then comes ecology to base organic farming on living ecological systems and cycle work with them emulate them and help sustain them that means a harmony with nature we are living with nature we are living in harmony with nature. So, no harm to environment, no harm to any living organism in the environment that is as ecology. So, all the, as you discussed earlier all the as animals, so bio uh, microbial organisms, plants they all live in harmony in case of the organic farming ecology. Then principle 3 fairness as you discuss fairness the transparency that means organic agriculture should build a relationship that ensures fairness with regard to the common environment and life opportunity. So, there should be a trust building the uh, producer and this uh, uh, consumer market they should be in close loop for developing a fairness in organic farming. Then care organic agriculture should be managed in a precautionary and responsible manner to protect the health and well being of current and future generation and the environment. So, we are all concerned about the health and the environment. We need a good food, we need we need the quality quality water to drink at the same time we need the quality air to breathe to live a good environment sustainable environment so that we, we remains the disease free and we can have a better life in a, a through this uh, as organic farming systems as we will discuss also all in the later classes how it can minimize the global warming potentials and also the in, ad in addition to the better food and uh, providing a better quality water drink and good good air to breathe. So, this uh, uh, in the principles that say conversion of land from conventional management to organic management, then management of the entire surrounding systems to ensure biodiversity and sustainability of the system, crop production with the use of alternative source of nutrients such as crop rotations, residue management, organic manures and biological inputs better plant protection practice by physical, cultural and biological control systems, maintenance of livestock with organic concepts and make them an integral part of entire system. So, once we go for the even organic farming, so livestock is must and they are the integral part of the organic farming because they provide the, the major inputs as a nutrients or the um, pesticides for the crop protections and the crop growth and development. So, maintenance of livestock and harmony with the livestock, well living of the livestock that is very, very important in case of organic farming. So, main issues of organic farming if you go for this as a principle, so uh, issues the standards, inspection certifications, accreditation, inputs, 
uh, market that's a export and domestic market so these are the some of the major issues are there so we'll discuss somehow in that classes and it's a brief as uh, uh, in this the standard means globally there are many standards available for the organic farming as from the IFM International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movement, then European standards, Japanese. In India, we have the national program for organic production, APEDA, Agricultural and Processed Food Products Exports Development Authority. So, they have some standards of the organic farming. Also, we have the certification agency. So, uh, there are many numbers, we can say ECOSART and SCAL, IMO, SGS, the Gurgaon, Naturaland, Lakon, Indosat, APOF Bangalore, ICSOP, Indian Society for Certification of Organic Products, Coimbatore, Bioinspectra, Cochin, IRFT Mumbai. So, these are the some of the certification agency, they are involved in certification of the organic products. Accreditation, so there is a national accreditation boards that are uh, responsible for this. Uh, 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 accreditation of the organic product, uh, products, then we have some limitations because of the high cost uh, poor inspection performance also, also there. And see the conversion, uh, if you go for the conversion from conventional uh, to uh, organic farming. Uh, so, this conversion from conventional organic products include all crop production and all animal husbandry to be converted to organic management over a period of time. So, uh, we cannot uh, convert the whole land to organic uh, at a stage. So, uh, we must follow the principles that means the conversion periods provides a time frame to start establishing organic management, building soil fertility and developing a viable sustainable agro ecosystem. So, uh, when you go for the conversion of land, uh, the conventional farming to organic farming. So, you must follow this one the conversion time period, specific time periods when we start on establishing our organic input management, build the uh, soil fertility and developing a viable and the sustainable agro ecosystems. The recommended is the whole farm including all crop production and all animal husbandry has to be converted to organic management over a period of time. Depending on level of farm enterprise, knowledge and expertise of the farmers and ecological and financial situation. So, uh, so they have converted so with the time that means the required time frame say for full organic certifications a conversion period of 36 months which 24 months as transition and last 12 months as organic is required with the approval by certification body and the product can be sold with organic description because when you go for the uh, conversion it is minimum 36 months. That means, the first 2 years uh, the two, uh, 24 months as a transition periods, where we do not use any chemical fertilizers or chemical pesticides, but the product cannot be sold as organic. The product can be sold as a transition to organic, not as organic. So, a, so first 24 months you should follow uh, all organic st standards for the crop production managements. If you are going for the uh, field crops, the seasonal crops or the plantation crops, say horticultural crops, in that case all the cases we need the conversion period of 36 months where 20, uh, 24 months uh, will be as a transition and last 12 months as it can be uh, sold as organic. So, in this case when you go for the total uh, the farm conversion to organic we can, uh, we can we can we can divide we will discuss that one the whole farm divided into sub plots and so only one section of the plot can be taken care for the organics and the rest, uh, rest 3 can be continued as a conventional farming. And when you go for the organic and the conventional there should be certain distance should be maintained because uh, minimum distance should be around 8 to 10 meters from organic plot to conventional plot. So, that there should not be any uh, leaching or any transition any nutrient movement between the organic and the conventional plots and the slowly slowly every year 
the the plot and the crop uh, the, the the farm can be converted to organic and also there are some principles when you go for the organic conversion the crop selection what type of crop you, you are choosing. So, if you are going for the uh, conversion to organic from the conventional farming. So, first first year we must choose a crop that require less nutrient, less nitrogen, less uh, uh, macronutrients those type of crops should be chosen in the initial year of conversion. So, as we move after first year then you can choose the high nutrient demanding crops. Especially in case of conversion the, the initial period the first year of conversion we should use the crops like a leguminous crops like the pulse crops like your green gram, soybean this should be chosen so that they, their yield should not be affected if you go for the organic nutrient management because these are the less nitrogen requiring crops. And uh, uh, the second second year, as, uh, moreover, these uh, legumes they do build on soil fertility, they do add nutrients. So after after the first year, if you take some other crops, uh, the high nitrogen requiring crops, then the yield may not be affected. But initial periods when the crop when the crop requires, uh, uh, if you take a crops initial uh, growing periods, high nutrient requiring crops, then the yield may be drastically reduced. So, for that reason when you go for the uh, rules or the, the conversion of organic farming, so that we will discuss of course, the, the cropping patterns, what type of crops you, you choose when you go for conversions, uh, especially for a the initial period of the organic farming when the transition phase we must choose a crops that require less nitrogen, less nit uh, nitrogen fertilizer or less nutrient exhaustive crops. So, after that toward third year when you go for the exactly your other organic products you are certifying organic products in those years in those you can use the crops of high nutrient requiring crops. Then uh, prohibited means say once land has been converted to organic production its conversion should not be reversed. So, so we should go for the organic it should not be uh, reversed to again conventional. So, the, there should be government initiatives as a facilitator for the organic farming. So, there is a national uh, uh, NPOP program, uh, then uh, national standards, accreditations, certifications. So, organic export through Ministry of Commerce, APEDA, uh, some facilitator as organic farming, development of organic farming technology, organic st already stand, stand organic farming by the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Uh, setting up uh, vermiculture uh, uh, cherry, bio fertilizer plant, fruits, vegetables and compost plants. So, that we can we can provide the regular regularly the organic nutrients and the organic uh, uh, pesticides, bio pesticides for this uh, crop productions. Human resource development through training and field demonstration is highly essential. So, regular training should be given to human resource how to develop bio fertilizer, bio -fertilizer unit or the vermicomposting the people can become the entrepreneur also in vermicomposting and in organic farming and developing the uh, organic uh, um, foods. Then quality testing and input production technology. So, that is also a um, part of the organic farming how you can go for the regular quality testing and the uh, how the, the fertilizer organic fertilizers or the organic pesticides can be can be produced for their use then market de market development and publicity. So, these are also the part of the organic farming. So, as uh, farmers can be now the farmers are showing interest for conversion of land to organics, but they need profit it should be profitable they should get the higher remunerations unless until they it is profitable. So, uh, farmers may not come forward. So, to have to motivate the farmers their produce should be sold in a good price and they should get a good returns in organic farming. So, uh, as a for this uh, uh, lecture as a organic farming concepts and principles. So, this deals with the basic con uh, concepts uh, what different type of organic farming and the principles means what are the principles involved in organic farming. So, once you know this then when you move to the future class also one class will be taking about the sustainable agriculture. So, organic farming means that leads to sustainable agricultures and we will discuss the indicators of sustainable agriculture, agriculture and based on that we will move to the next class um, further classes that means, how we can go for the 
organic farming technology. That means the input uh, productions, how we can produce the organic fertilizers, organic pesticides and the management in the field, how we can apply in the field and these standards and the principles, it should be maintained when you go for the organic farming whole. Uh, so, this, these are the some of the basic understanding before you move for the, uh, the main subjects as a input manage input productions and input management technology in the organic farming. Okay. Thank you all.